What's up guys? I'm mixing up some agar. I thought I'd show you how I do it. I use the FDA standard agar recipe for malt extract agar. Any other recipe is technically a modified recipe. What you're going to need is light malt extract and agar. So this recipe is a 3 to 2 ratio of extract to agar. So I like to do 60 grams of light malt extract and 20 grams of agar and that fills up one of these half pint jars pretty well. And that gives you 100 grams exactly which will make four batches of 500 milliliters which fills up about 20 to 25 plates. So I'll go ahead and I'll start by taking some malt extract and pouring 60 grams into this jar. Good enough. Then we take the agar, tear out the scale, and we'll go ahead and dump 40 grams into this of agar. There we go. I like to add a silica packet just to keep things dry in there. And that's it, you've mixed up your recipe. I'll show you how to cook it. But first you wanna make sure it's very thoroughly mixed. I like to roll it in all directions. I like to vigorously shake it and I'll do this for at least a couple minutes to make sure it's nice and homogenized. Once you have your malt extract agar all mixed up, you're going to want to grab some cold water. You don't want to use warm water. And a container that you can weigh it out in. You can also go volumetrically. A one gram of water is one milliliter, but weight is more accurate. So go ahead and tear it out. I'm going to be making a 500 milliliter recipe, so I'll weigh out 500 grams of water. alright to go slightly over because you're going to bring it to a boil and probably lose some. Next you want to weigh out 25 grams of malt extract. Now once you have 25 grams weighed out, the way I like to mix it in is put it on my stir plate. Get it going. pour it in. And this helps reduce some clumping. And this is also why we start with cold water, because if you start with hot water it will all clump together and, and suck. So I'm just going to let that stir up and then we're going to melt it down. Alright, once you got it all stirred up, go ahead and pour it into a pot. And then just bring it to a boil. When you're boiling it, you want to come over and occasionally stir it so nothing gets stuck to the bottom. Once it comes to a boil, that means your agar is fully dissolved. So you can go ahead and transfer it into a container that you want to pour it from. I like to either use these old alcohol bottles or just a jar. 
and they both work just fine. It's just preference. So we're gonna go ahead and just pour it back into this jar. And I like to rinse out my pot immediately because the agar doesn't get a chance to solidify. So there you go. 500 milliliters of agar. Go ahead and put this in the jar, unmodified lid. I just flip the lid and leave it slightly loose. And I'll show you how to pressure cook it. Okay. Now you're ready to pressure cook your agar. Very simple, just put it in the fucking pressure cooker. Prep two and a half quarts of water. And just make sure that the lid is loosened about a quarter turn. And that's it. I don't put tin foil on top, don't do anything. Just pressure cook it. When you're sterilizing liquids, they sterilize very quickly. So my process is I turn the heat on high and I'll let that purge out the steam for about 15 minutes. One, once this thing pops up, it'll start shooting out steam there. I let that run for 10 or 15 minutes. Then I just put the weight on top. I let it get to around 15 to 17 PSI. And then I just shut the heat right off. I don't let it sit there for any amount of time. In the past, I've said I let it sit there for like an hour. Completely unnecessary if you're only running liquids. But you wanna make sure that they do get to temperature to properly sterilize. So I do like to overshoot 15 PSI a little bit and the 15 minute purge is pretty important. Once you have steam coming out like this, it's not quite purging. The uh, lock has to be up. You can encourage that to happen just by holding it down with something for a couple seconds. You know, five or ten seconds. And once the pressure builds up, you just release it and it pops right up. And now it's purging. You can see that it's got steam coming out and it's getting rid of all the trapped air inside of there to make sure the entire thing is filled with steam, which will help it get to sterilization temperatures properly. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this purge out for about 15 minutes. You can turn down the heat like a little bit, but you still want it to keep at a, at a nice rolling boil. So yeah, I'll come back in 15 minutes, just slap the weight on there. Bring it up to around 15, 17 PSI, and then just shut the heat right off. All right, we're starting up to get to 17, which means that this is done. I'm gonna go ahead and just let it get that last little bit up there. And we're good. Now I'll show you how to pour your agar.